I teach courses on world religions in universities in different parts of the world, and I always love it. And I know I will enjoy being with you uh, these days very, very much. Oh, but a big question. What is world religion? This is a course on world religion. What is religion? Some time ago, when I had a book I wanted to be published, I took it to a publishing company and they wrote me a letter saying, we will not publish your book. In fact, we will not publish anything on religion. Let them all die. And so we find that there are a lot of people around our world that are not very happy about the religions. Why is that true? Why is religion such a controversial question? What is it anyway, this thing, this belief system called religion? What is it? So turn to your neighbor and discuss that question. And then I want to ask someone from this side of the class and someone from this side of the class to report on what you have decided that religion is, okay? So the question is, what is religion? What, in other words, what will this course be about? What do you expect to study in this class? What is this thing called religion? Turn to your neighbor and discuss that, and then I want you to report back to me. Are you ready to report? Very good. On this side here, just one person. What is religion? Okay. All right. That, that's very helpful. Yes. It's, it's interesting in his, it is, it is interesting in his discussion, in his discussion, he does not mention belief in God or in the other dimension of life. That his definition, I think even Marxism, which does not believe in a God, would fit that definition. And that's, I think, a question. Uh, if a worldview has no room for believing in the other dimension of life, is that a religion, you know, or is that only an ideology? So that's a very interesting response you gave. What about on this side of the room? Did anyone say something different on this side of the room? Um, so uh, I think that uh, religion is is the system of personal beliefs. And it's also, religion is something that shapes our life. It's something that gives us um, rules, moral rules according to which we live. It's something that helps us determine what is right and what is wrong, and how to act in certain situations. Like it's customs, traditions. This is an, my understanding of the religion. Okay, okay, yeah. Very interesting. And, um, um, she was saying that religion provides morality, moral roots. Now, I grew up in a society where there was a lot of witchcraft, where religious power was used to kill and to destroy. 
So is religion always related to morality? Can it also be related to destruction, you see? Those are the sorts of questions we need to think about as we talk about religion. So let me put on the board a definition that I work with as I think of religion. And you can think about that. Um, but it is the working definition I will be using in this, in this class. Religion is a system of beliefs and practices and practices that relate to the mysterium. mysterium in regards to the ultimate questions. Religion is a system of beliefs and practices that relate to the mysterium. That would be the other dimension of life that we don't see, but that we believe is there, the mysterium. I did not use the name God because not all religions believe in a creator God. Um, like Buddhism, for example. It's a philosophy which takes on religious dimensions, but Buddha himself did not believe that there's any God around, you see. And so, mysterium, I think, is a better word to use than the word God as we describe religions as we observe them around the world today. That relates to the mysterium in regards to the ultimate questions. And we will talk more about that. What are these ultimate questions? that religion provides a framework for. And not all people feel a need for religion to provide answers to the ultimate questions. They have found other, even atheistic systems. And we'll talk about that in this class. Uh, some of these alternative systems which do not admit to a mysterium <laughs> within, within life. Although it's very interesting, even atheistic systems often feel a need for a connection with the mysterium, even though they might deny it. I remember some years ago, I um, visited uh, Sarajevo uh, in 1979 at the height of the communist system, uh, controlling the, the uh, thought of the people in that region of the world. And I was told that in Sarajevo now and in Yugoslavia, they were building atheistic chapels in the cemeteries. Atheistic chapels, chapels where you go to meditate, to pray, atheistic chapels <laughs> in the cemeteries. What was going on? In that atheistic ideology, people were saying they need a connection with the mysterium, I think is what was going on. And so although the ideology said, no, no place for chapels at all. In reality, people were seeking for a reconnection, a connection with the mysterium. And religion then, as it opens up uh, pathways to connect with the mysterium, does provide a framework for responding to the ultimate questions of life. And we'll talk about that in this class 
In fact, that will be an organizing theme for the class. What are the ultimate questions? And what is the Buddhist response to ultimate questions? What is the Christian response? What is the, the, uh, the, the um, Muslim response? So we'll be looking at these different religions and the response to the ultimate questions as they uh, unlock for us um, in various ways a perception and understanding of the mysterium, of that mysterious dimension of life that we don't see and yet we have a sense that that, 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 that reality is there. So this will be my working definition. And you can jot that down if you wish. We'll be, the whole framework of the course will be built around that definition of, um, of, uh, of, of religion. We're titling the course um, The Gospel. This is the Christian Gospel. In Lively Encounter with the world of religions. There's many religions out there. The gospel in lively encounter with the world of many religions. That's the overall theme of the class. And a sub-theme would be, in other words, what difference does Jesus make? Why might an atheist decide to become a Christian? Now, what difference does Jesus make? as Jesus walks across the path of ideologies, even atheistic ideologies, or walks across the path of religions or of religion, what difference does he make? Um, I remember some years ago, I was in, um, in uh, Albania just after the collapse of the communist system, and uh, I was meeting with a professor of physics in uh, one of the uh, high schools. Um, and he said to me, you Christians are stupid. What you say makes no sense at all. Tell me, what does God have to do with a tomato? And I said, oh, the first chapter of the Bible says, God created the tomato. It is very good. Enjoy the tomato and give thanks to God for the tomato. Whoa, he said, is that what the Christian faith said? I said, absolutely. In fact, we even commanded to develop the tomato to make it get better. You know, the whole commitment to development and so forth. And he says, wow, if that's the case, I think I could become a Christian. <laughs> could you send us someone to our town to teach us about this God who created the tomato? And so in that very simple exchange, something happened as he heard this very basic biblical conviction that God created, you see. Many ideologies and religions don't believe that. But as he heard that word of revelation, that word from God that God created, he says, wow, that's very good. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Uh, as a background scripture for all that we'll be talking about, I'd like to look at 1 John uh, chapter 1. The first several verses there in that chapter. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we've seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that which we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. We've seen, we've heard, we've touched the Word, the eternal Word, through whom the universe is created and sustained. And that Word, as we have been touched by that Word, has given us much joy, much life, a sense of purpose and meaning and direction. We know where we're headed. We know what life is about, for the Word has revealed this to us. We've touched and handled that Word, very good news Word, and we want to share that Word with all with whom we can. That's the spirit with which we want to look at this course 
as we look at the many different answers to life's ultimate questions that the religions bring to us, we want to return again and again to this one who is the Word. And in what ways is he good news um, within the world of Hinduism or of Buddhism or even atheism, like that atheistic professor at, uh, at the uh, high school in, in, Lithu in uh, Albania some years ago.